Lesson 22. Would you like to go? Pronouns. Hello, students. Today, we're going to talk about invitations, polite questions, and making excuses. Now, first, we're going to look at how we make sentences and what we've learned about pronouns. We'll use these when we make the invitations, ask questions, and make excuses. Now, when we make sentences, we need a subject and a verb. Every sentence in English has a subject and a verb. The subject tells us who or what is doing the action. And the verb is usually action, some kind of action. Okay? Now, here's an example. I drive a red car. I drive a red car. Now, this is the subject. Verb. And this is the object. Okay? I drive a red car. I, who, drive, action, a red car, object. What? What do I drive? I drive a red car. Okay. Now, we're going to look at some more sentences, and you can decide what is the subject, the verb, and the object. So, we'll make some room here. Okay. Boys play football. Boys play football. He speaks English. He speaks English. And cats eat fish. Cats eat fish. Okay? Now, we have three sentences, and the assistants are going to help us by identifying the parts of the sentence. So, we're going to look at only the subjects first. And, Ali, what is the subject of the first sentence? Voice is the subject. Yes, here's the subject. Okay? Good. Now, Susan, can you tell me the subject in the second sentence? He is the subject. Yes, good. And Isabel, of course, what's the subject in the third sentence? The subject is cats. Yes, good. All right. Now, we're going to look at the second part of the sentence, which is the verb. Now, remember, usually the verb comes second. Subject and then the verb. Okay, now look at, look at these again. Ali, what's the verb in the first sentence? The verb is play. Yes. The verb is play. Now, Isabel, the, sent the verb in sentence two. The verb is speaks. Speaks. And Susan, the verb in the last one. The verb is eat. Eat, yes, okay. So we have the subject and the verb for each sentence. Now, let's talk about pronouns for a moment. You know this, this is review. Okay, now let's make some room here first. If you look at your screen, you'll see a chart of the pronouns that we use when we want to talk about people or things. So let's look at this. The subject pronouns will go across. We have subject pronouns, object pronouns, possessive adjectives. Okay? So I, me, my, my name, you, you, your, your name, he, him, his, his name, she, her, her, her name, it, it, its, its name, we, us, our, our name, you, you, 
your, your name, they, them, their, their name. We can use the pronouns to talk about the subject. Let's look at this. We have a dog. We have a dog. All right? And here's, here we have we, the subject pronoun. Okay? They are English. They are English. And here they is the subject pronoun. Okay? Now, we can also use pronouns to talk about objects. So, we're going to look at some object pronouns now. And here are some examples. Anne, Anne, married him. Anne married him. Now, if we look at this, we see Anne is the subject. Married is the verb. And him is the object. Anne married him. All right? Here's another example. The dog eats the food. The dog eats the food. Now, again, we have the subject, the dog. Eats is the verb. And the food is the object. What the dog does this, eats, the object is what does the dog eat, okay? The food. And another one, he is reading a book. He is reading a book. He is the subject. This is who we're talking about. Is reading. These two words are the verb. And a book is the object. Okay? He is reading a book. What is he reading? A book. Okay? Now, remember that we must use singular pronouns to talk about singular nouns and plural pronouns to talk about plural nouns. Now, let me show you some examples. Okay. I have a book. I have a book. It is on the table. I have a book. It, it, is on the table. Singular noun, singular pronoun. Okay, another example. I have some books. They are on the table. Okay? So, I have some books, plural. I have some books. They are on the table. Okay? Plural, plural. All right? Great. Now, let's practice with some sentences. I'm going to write some wrong sentences on the board, and our assistants will make them correct. Okay. Now, here we go. I told he a story. Ali, what's wrong with this? I told him a story. Yes, I told him a story. Why? I cannot use he because he is not the subject. Okay, and what's him? It is object pronoun. Yes, good. Okay, now here's another wrong sentence. Anne's husband is a doctor. Him is very handsome. Oh, the sentence is wrong. Susan, fix it. Anne's husband is a doctor. He is very handsome. He is very handsome. Why? Him is an object pronoun. He is a subject. Yes, very good. Okay, Isabel, here's a wrong sentence for you. She's sister is studying 
English. Now, this sentence is wrong. Please fix it. Okay. Her sister is studying English. Okay. All right. So, we have to use her because we're using sister. This is possessive. All right. Now, let's take this off. Now, sometimes we use two objects in a sentence. One of these is the direct object, object, and sometimes there's also an indirect object, okay? Now we've been seeing these. The direct object is the object. The indirect object is to or for someone or something, okay? So this is the indirect object. So the first and the second. Now, look at this sentence. I read a story. I read a story, okay? Now, the story is the direct object, direct object. Okay? It answers the question, what did you read? What did you read? I read a story. Now, here's another one. I told her. I told her. Direct. Direct object. Okay? So, this answers the questions. question, who? I told who? I told her. This is the direct object. Now, here are some more sentences. And let me make some room here. I read a story to the child. I read a story to the child. Now, let's look at this sentence. Subject, I. Read is the verb. A story is the direct object, and to the child is the indirect object, okay? I read what? A story. To whom? To the child, okay? First and second. Now, here's some more examples. She gave a present to him. She gave a present to him. Subject, she. Verb, gave. A present, you know, direct object, to him. Indirect object. Okay? And then one more example. He made dinner for his wife. What a nice man. Okay, he, subject, made, verb, dinner, object, direct object, for his wife is the indirect object. Now, here are the questions. Who read the story? I read the story. What did I read? I read a story. And who did I read to? I read to the child. I read a story to the child. Okay? To the child. So, subject, verb, direct object, indirect object. Okay. Let me make some more space and we'll ask more questions. So, here we go. Jane gave a cake to me. Lucky me. Okay? Now, Isabel, which is the subject, the direct object, and the indirect object? So first, what's the subject? Jane is the subject. Mm -hmm. A cake is the direct object, and me is the indirect object. Yes. Good. Okay? So Jane gave a cake to me. Good. Okay, here's another sentence. Mike 
but uh, present for his mother. Mike bought a present for his mother. Okay, Susan, you do the same thing. Mike is the subject. A present is the direct object. For his mother, indirect object. Yes, good. Okay, so we've got subject, direct object, indirect object. Okay, and here comes another one. My sister told a story to her daughter. Okay, I'll leave the sentences for you. My sister is the subject. Story is the direct object. Her daughter is the indirect object. Yes, good. Okay, so my sister told a story to her daughter. All right, now let's look at a couple of more examples that are the same but different. I gave a pen to him. I gave a pen to him. Or I gave him a pen. Now, these sentences have the same meaning, but the structure is a little different. Now, there's no to here. Here there is because we have direct object, indirect object. When we put it here, it's still the indirect object, but there's no two, no four, okay? So this is direct object and indirect object. This is the indirect object and the object, okay? So they're the same, but when we move it, we take out two, okay? I gave the book to him. I gave the book to him. I gave him the book. Okay, so we change places here. Jane gave a cake to me. Jane gave a cake to me. Jane gave me a cake. So we moved it. Took out two and we moved it. Jane gave me a cake. Mike bought a present for his mother. Mike bought a present for his mother. Mike bought, you know this, his mother a present. Okay, we moved it, we took out four. And finally, my sister told me a story. Now this one is going to go the other way. Here's me, my sister told a story to me. Okay, so we take out me, we move it here, and we put in two. Okay? So you can see when we move it, we take out two or four. When we move it this way, we put in two or four. Same meaning. Okay? The meaning doesn't change. Now, we're going to practice a little bit, and let me take these off, and we'll put some more on here, and our assistants will help us. All right. Now, we're going to change the direct and the indirect objects. So, I wrote a letter to my cousin yesterday. I wrote a letter to my cousin yesterday. Okay, Susan, I want you to change it. I wrote 
my cousin a letter yesterday. I wrote my cousin a letter yesterday. Okay, so we moved this, we put it here, and we took out two. Okay, can you pass me the pen? Okay, now Ali. Can you pass the pen to me? Can you pass the pen to me? Okay, so for this one, we took me, we put it here, and we added two. Okay? All right. And I will send you a postcard. Okie dokie, Isabel. I will send a postcard to you. Yes. I will send a postcard to you. Okay? Again, we took you, because this is the direct object, you becomes to you. Okay? So, when it comes before the object, no two, no four. When it comes after the direct object, we have two or four. Okay? All right. Now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. Anne is having a party. She invited me to the party. I am meeting my friend there. We are giving her a present. She is going to be very happy. Read and repeat. Invitations. Look what I have. It has my name on it. Ms. Molly Stone. Now, let's see what's in it. Oh, it's an invitation. So, an invitation. Invitation is a polite way to ask people to do things. So this is an invitation. It's a polite way to ask people to do things. Now, I'll show you my invitation and let me read it to you. Dear Ms. Stone, you are invited to our son Harry's wedding to Lydia. They were both your students last year. The marriage will take place on 14th September at noon in Green Park. We would be pleased if you would come. Sincerely, the Shaws. Oh, very nice. I'd love to go. I accept. I'll write and tell them. I'm going to say yes. So accepting an invitation is saying yes. Refusing an invitation is saying no. So I'll write to them now and I'll show you what I'm going to write. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Shaw, thank you for your invitation. I'd be happy to come to the wedding. Sincerely, Molly Stone. Okay, so I'm accepting the invitation and I say, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Shaw, 
Thank you for your invitation. I'd be happy to come to the wedding. Sincerely, Molly Stone. Now, perhaps I can't go to the wedding, and so I need to write a refusal. I can't go. So I'll show you what I can write for them. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Shaw, thank you for your invitation. I'm sorry I won't be free that day. Best wishes to Harry and Lydia Molly Stone. Okay, so this one Dear Mr. and Mrs. Shaw, thank you for your invitation. I'm sorry, I won't be free that day. Best wishes to Harry and Lydia, Molly Stone. Okay, this is a refusal. I can't go. Now, today we're learning to make an invitation and we'll learn to accept and refuse politely. First, we'll start with invitations. Now, we're going to start with places that we invite people to. So, let me show you some of the places. For example, a movie, a restaurant, a play, a celebration, such as a wedding or birthday, a party, a concert or the opera and maybe a nightclub. So we can invite people to places like a movie, a restaurant, a play, a celebration such as a wedding or birthday, a party, a concert or the opera, and a nightclub. Okay, now we start an invitation with some fixed expressions like a formula. Some are questions and some aren't. Now, let me show you the formal ones first. Now, one way is to say, would you care to go, would you care to go to a play with me? This is very polite. Or another one is, would you care to join me for Da, da, da. Would you care to join me for dinner tomorrow evening? Okay, so would you care to go? Would you care to join me for dinner? Okay, so these are very formal. Now, here's another group. Would you care to meet me for me for? Would you care to meet me for dinner and a drink? You're invited to. Now, this one is not a question, and we saw this for the wedding. You're invited to a wedding. Okay? Oops, we forgot to. All right. I'd like to invite you to. I'd like to invite you to go to a wedding. I'd like to invite you to dinner. Okay, so these are very formal. Now, here are some that are a little less formal. We'll say less formal. Would you like to go blah, blah? Would you like to go to the cinema with me? Would you like to go to dinner? Okay, so this is a little less formal. And then these next ones are casual. These are casual. So with your good friends. Let's go. 
Let's go to the movies tonight. Let's go have coffee. How about going blah blah? How about going to the movies tonight? How about going to the cinema? Okay? Now, we can also say, do you want to? Do you want to go have coffee? Do you want to go have coffee? Or would you like to? Uh -huh. So these are about the same. Would you like to have coffee? Do you want to have coffee? This one's a little bit more formal. This is with your friends. These three especially are with your good friends. Okay? Now, these were the invitations. Let's look at how to say yes, politely. I would love to. I would love to have dinner with you. Or I'd love to. These are the same, but this one is shorter. Okay, so, but they're the same. I would like to, I would like to have dinner with you. And again, we make it shorter. I'd like to. Now, then we say what we're going to do. Okay? Now, Here's some examples, and you can also see them on the screen as we do these. So, would you care to go to a concert in the park? Would you care to join me for dinner? at the restaurant you're invited to dinner at my house i'd like to invite you to a party would you like to go to a movie at the Cinemax. So place and, or what and where. Now here's a casual one. Let's go out. There's no time or place or anything. It's very casual, very general for this one. Okay? Now here's another one. How about, how about going to a club. So here we have a place and a place. What and where. What and where. Okay? From very formal to very casual. Alright? Now, we usually say when we want to go. So let me take this away and then I'll show you more examples with the place and the time. Okay? So when you make an invitation, it can be complete. So here we go. Would you care to go to a concert in the park? Okay, we have what? We have where? Tomorrow night. Here's the time. Would you care to go to a concert in the park tomorrow night? Would you care to join me for dinner? Dinner, dinner, tonight at eight. You're invited to a dinner on July 14th at 7 p.m. 
I'd like to invite you to a party on Saturday. Would you like to go to a movie at the Cinemax tonight? Let's go out this Saturday night. And how about going to a club tonight? Now, there's another way we can do it, and let me make some more room here. And we can change it around a little bit. And then I'll show you how it looks. Okay, sometimes we say what, where, and when first. So, there's a dinner special at the steakhouse this weekend. Here's the information, and now you can say, would you like to go? There's a dinner special at the steakhouse this weekend. Would you like to go? Okay, information and invitation. Gone with the wind is at the Cinemax at 6 p.m. tonight. So, Gone with the Wind is at the Cinemax at 6 p.m. tonight. Here's the information. This is with your friend. How about going with me? Gone with the Wind is at the Cinemax at 6 p.m. tonight. How about going with me? Okay, so this one's more formal, this one's more casual. Now, let's talk about accepting invitations again. And this is what they can look like. So this is if you want to go, okay? You're saying yes. So formal, we have thank you very much. I'd love to go. Thank you for asking. I'll be there. And again, yes, thank you. That sounds very nice. Now, here's some more casual ones. Uh, for someone you know better, yes, thanks. I'd like that. Yes, thanks. It sounds great. Okay, let's go. I'm going to write some invitations, some places to go on the board, and then we're going to practice with them. Now here's one. Weekend special at the steakhouse. All you can eat steak, soup, and salad, 4 to 10 p.m. only. Here's another one. Live classical music. City Orchestra is playing in Green Park at 7. One night only. And here's the other one. New at Cinemax. Tears of the Sun with Bruce Willis and Monica Bellucci. Great action film showing nightly 8 p.m. We're going to practice with these invitations, and our assistants are going to help us, of course. So let's make the invitations. And first of all, Isabel, I want you to pick a place and invite Susan. And Susan, just accept. Okay. 
Would you like to go to dinner at the steakhouse on Saturday, Susan? Thank you very much. I'd love to. Great. Okay. Ali, ask Isabel. Isabel, Bruce Willis's Tears of the Sun is showing at Cinemax. Would you care to go to the movie tomorrow at 8? <laughs> yes, thank you. That sounds very nice. Okay, great. Now, Susan, ask Ali. Ali, would you care to join me for a concert tonight at 7? Thank you. I would love to join you. Yes, good. All right. Now, again, Ali, ask Susan, but be less formal. Susan, Bruce Willis's Tears of the Sun is showing at Cinemax at 8. How about going to the movie tomorrow? Yes, thanks. It sounds great. Okay. Isabel, ask Ali. Ali, let's go to the uh, dinner at the steakhouse on Saturday. Okay, let's go. Now, it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. Would you care to go to a movie on Friday night? Yes, thank you. I'd like that. Would you care to join me for dinner at Kuchukev tonight? Yes, thank you very much. I'd love to go. You're invited to dinner at my parents' house on Saturday at 6 p.m. Thank you for asking. I'll be there. Would you like to go to a nightclub this weekend? Let's go out tonight. Read and repeat. Polite questions and excuses. Now, when we refuse an invitation, we just don't say no because people will think we're not polite. So first, we thank the person for asking, and then we usually make an excuse. An excuse is a reason that we can't go. Okay? Now, let's look at some ways to say no politely. Now, first we'll start with some formal ways. And here are some examples. I'm sorry. No, but thank you for asking. I'm busy that evening. I'd love to, but I can't. Less formal, we have some more examples. I'm sorry. I'm busy then, but thanks for asking. Or thanks but I can't. Or just, thanks. These are casual. Sorry, but no thanks. I can't eat Mexican food. Sorry. I can't. Oh, G. G doesn't mean anything. It's just a sound. G. Sorry. But 
I can't make it. Okay, now, if you look at the screen, you'll see the invitations again, or the places again, that we saw before. So we're going to work with these places. Now, the first one is, again, weekend special at the steakhouse, all-you-can-eat steak, soup, and salad, 4 to 10 p.m. only. Now, that's the first one. The second one is live classical music. City Orchestra is playing in Green Park at 7, one night only. That's the second one. And then the third one is new at Cinemax, Tears of the Sun with Bruce Willis and Monica Bellucci. Great action film, showing nightly, 8 p.m. Okay? Now, we're going to practice with the assistants. You're going to make the same invitation that you made before, but this time I want you to refuse the invitation, say no politely, and give an excuse. Okay? Now, Isabel, you ask Susan. Susan. Would you like to go to the dinner at the steakhouse on Saturday? I'm sorry, I'm leaving for Malaysia on Saturday, but thanks for asking. Okay, good. Ali, you ask Isabel. Isabel, Bruce Willis's Tears of the Sun is showing at Cinemax. Would you care to go tomorrow night? Oh, I'm sorry, but thank you for asking. I'm working tomorrow night. Okay, good. Now, Susan, ask Ali. Ali, would you care to join me for a concert tonight at 7? Uh, I'm sorry, no, but thank you for asking. I am busy that night. Okay, Ali, now you ask Susan and be less formal. Susan, Bruce Willis's Tears of the Sun is showing at Cinemax tonight. How about going to the cinema at 8? I'm sorry, thank you, but I don't like action movies. Okay, good. Now, Isabel, you ask Ali. Ali, uh, let's go to dinner at Steakhouse on Saturday. Uh, sorry, but no, thanks. I am eating at my parents' house tonight. Okay, very good. Now we know that you don't have a social schedule. All right. Now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. Would you like to go to a concert next Friday night? I'm sorry, but thank you very much. I'm busy on Friday. How about going to a seafood restaurant tomorrow? Sorry, but no thanks. I can't eat seafood. Let's go to dinner at the steakhouse on Saturday. Sorry, but no thanks. I'm eating at my parents' house that night. Read and repeat. Other polite expressions. We've looked at making invitations, accepting invitations politely, and refusing invitations politely. Now, after we've accepted, we went to the party or whatever, we have to say thank you to the person who invited us. Now, these are some ways to say thank you at the end of a social event. For example, at the end of a dinner at a house or a restaurant, we might say this. Thank you very much. I enjoyed the meal. Or, 
Thank you. That was a nice dinner. Okay, now remember, this is at the end. Now, at the end of a movie or a party, we thank the person who invited us. So here's, again, what we can say. Thank you. I had a good time. Thank you. That was a good... Thank you. I enjoyed the evening. Now, usually we say evening for a social event, not night. Okay? Now, the person who invited you usually says only, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Okay? Now, sometimes the person who made the invitation also says, I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you liked it. You're welcome. I'm glad you liked it. Or, I enjoyed it too. I enjoyed it too. Or, I'm glad you could come. Now, we're going to practice. And, Ali, let's start with you. You went to dinner at Isabel's house. You're leaving now. What do you say? Thank you, Isabel. That was a nice dinner. Yeah, we are welcome, Ali. I'm glad you liked it. Very good. Okay. And Susan, what do you say? Thank you very much, Isabel. I you enjoyed the meal. You're welcome. Okay, good. Now, Isabel, Ali invited you to a movie. The movie is over. You're going home now. Thank you, Ali. I enjoyed the movie. You're welcome. I enjoyed it too. Good. Okay. Susan, Ali asked you to a party. The party is over. You're going home now. What do you say? Thank you, Ali. I had a good time. You're welcome. I'm glad you could come. Now, Ali, Susan and Isabel invited you to lunch at a restaurant. Lunch is over. You're leaving now. What do you say? Susan, Isabel, thank you. That was a good lunch. You're welcome, Ali. Good girls. Okay. Susan, Isabel asked you to a concert. The concert is over and you're leaving now. Thank you, Isabel. I enjoyed the evening. You're welcome. I'm glad you liked it. Now, we use some expressions at other times and these are ways that we can say, I'm sorry. All right? So, I'm sorry. Now, you want to ask a question, but I'm busy. So you can say, sorry, could I ask you a question? Now, you step on my foot. Well, it was an accident. And you didn't mean to. When you have an accident, you don't mean it to happen. So you say, I'm sorry. Are you all right? Or, I ask you a question. You don't hear me. You want me to repeat the question. So you say, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Or another example, I ask you a question. You don't understand the question. You say, I'm sorry. I don't understand. This is very useful when you're learning English. Okay. We can also say, excuse me, 
excuse me or pardon me. Pardon me. These are like, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Pardon me. Okay? Now, let's practice. So, Ali, we're at dinner. I have the salt. This is the salt. You want it. I'm talking to Isabel. Ask me. Excuse me, Ms. Stone. Could I have the salt? Yes, please. All right. Now, Susan, you ask me the same thing. All right. Pardon me, Ms. Stone. Could you give me the salt? Yes, certainly. All right. Now, Isabel, I call you on the telephone. You can't hear what I'm saying. What do you say? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Okay, good. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Ali, I call you on the telephone. You can't hear what I'm saying. Excuse me. I can't hear you. Okay, good. Now, Susan, I say something to you. You don't understand what I mean. I'm sorry. I don't understand. Okay. Now, Isabel, what do you say? Pardon me. I didn't understand you. Okay, I'll say it again. All right, thank you. Listen and write. Now it's time to listen and write. Listen and write these words. Number one, accept. Accept. Two, refuse. Refuse. Three. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Four. Pardon me. Pardon me. Five. Excuse me. Excuse me. Now, check your work. Number one, accept. Number two, refuse. Number three, I'm sorry. Number four, pardon me. Number five, excuse me. Now, listen and write the sentences. Number one, Thank you. I accept your invitation. Thank you. I accept your invitation. Number two. I'm sorry. I have to refuse your invitation. I'm sorry. I have to refuse your invitation. Number three. I'm sorry, I'm busy tonight. I'm sorry, I'm busy tonight. Number four, pardon me, I didn't understand you. Pardon me, I didn't understand you. Number five, excuse me, I stepped on your foot. Excuse me, I stepped on your foot. Now, check your work. Number one, thank you, I accept your invitation. Number two, I'm sorry, I have to refuse your invitation. Number three, I'm sorry, I'm busy tonight. Number four, pardon me, I didn't understand you. Number five, excuse me, I stepped on your foot. Now, read the story and then answer the questions about it. Read and answer. (laughs) 
Jack called Jill on the telephone on Wednesday. He invited her to a movie. He said, Jill, there's a good movie at the Cinemax on Friday. Would you like to go with me? Jill accepted. Then Jack asked her another question. He asked, would you like to go out for dinner before the movie? Jill said, yes, I would. Thanks. Jack went to her house at 7 o'clock on Friday. They went to a nice restaurant. Jill was eating her rice. Jack bumped her arm. Jill had rice all over her dress. Jack said, excuse me, Jill, are you all right? She was fine. Next, Jill was drinking her coffee. Jack bumped her arm. Jill had coffee all over her dress. Again, Jack said, I'm sorry, Jill, are you all right? This time, Jill said, I'm sorry, Jack, I have a headache. I think I'll go home now. The next week, Jack called Jill. He invited her to the cinema. Jill said, I'm sorry, but I'm washing my hair this Friday. Jack said, maybe next week? Jill said, I'm sorry, Jack. I'll be busy then, too. Poor Jack. He will never see Jill again. Number one. What did Jack do on Wednesday? What did Jack do on Wednesday? Number two. Where did Jack ask Jill to go? Where did Jack ask Jill to go? Number three. Did Jill refuse? Did Jill refuse? Number four. What did Jack do first at the restaurant? What did Jack do first at the restaurant? Number five. What did he do next? What did he do next? Number six. Did Jack and Jill go to the movie? Did Jack and Jill go to the movie? Number seven. What was Jill's excuse? What was Jill's excuse? Number eight, where did Jill go? Where did Jill go? Number nine, is Jill going out with Jack this Friday? Is Jill going out with Jack this Friday? Number ten, will Jack see Jill again? Will Jack see Jill again? Now, check your answers. Number one. What did Jack do on Wednesday? Jack called Jill. Number two. Where did Jack ask Jill to go? He invited her to dinner and a movie. Number three. Did Jill refuse? No, she accepted. Number four. What did Jack do first at the restaurant? Jack bumped Jill's arm. Number five. What did he do next? Jack told her he was sorry. Number six. Did Jack and Jill go to the movie? No, they didn't go to the movie. Number seven. What was Jill's excuse? Jill had a headache. Number eight. 
Where did Jill go? She went home. Number nine. Is Jill going out with Jack this Friday? No, she isn't going out with Jack. Number ten. Will Jack see Jill again? No, he won't. Okay, that's all for today. We'll see you next time. Practicing English. Hey, you guys, did you get invitations to my parents' wedding anniversary? Yes, I did. Did you get one too, Jack? Yeah, I got mine yesterday. Yeah, I've never been to the Talabasha restaurant before. I heard it's a very nice place. Yeah, I went there once for a wedding. You're right, it is a nice place. The invitation was very nice, very formal. The honor of your presence is requested. I know. It was a bit formal. My mom picked out the invitations. She and my dad have asked us to ask three friends to the party, so we won't be bored. Oh, that was nice of them to let you have your friends come to such a nice place. It was my mom's idea. She knows that my brothers and sisters will have a better time if some of our friends are there. I think this will be fun. So, my friends. Will you be able to come to my family's party on the 27th? I would love to come to your family's party, Alexi. Angie, what about you? Are you free on the 27th? Yes, thank you. I would be honored to attend such a nice party for your parents. Okay, Jack, you're next. You said it would be fun, but you haven't said if you can come or not. Will you be able to come to my family's party on the 27th? You won't believe this. But I'm away that weekend. I promise my landlady to drive her out somewhere out of the city. Alexi, I'm sorry, but I won't be able to come. Oh no, Jack. I'm sorry you won't be able to join us. If your plans change, let me know, okay? Will you tell your mom that I can't come? I'm really sorry to miss this, but I have promised to do it. I understand completely. We will miss having you with us. Hi guys. Hey. Hi. Hi Julie. Hey, I'm going to have a few friends over to my house on Friday night. We'll rent some movies and order some pizza. My housemates are in Europe for a few days, so I have the apartment to myself. Would you like to come over and eat pizza and watch some movies? Hey Julie, that sounds like a great night. I would love to come. What time is good for you? Uh, let's say about seven thirty. I'll order the pizza at eight, and we can watch movies after that. Yeah, can I bring anything? Nope, just yourself. Alexi, what about you? Are you coming over to my apartment on Friday? Thanks, Julie. I'd like to spend Friday evening with all of you. It sounds like fun. Are there any other people coming? Yes, a couple of people from the building and some friends from school are coming over too. Don't worry, there will be ten people or fewer. That sounds good to me. Thank you for inviting me. Angie, I hope you can come. We had such a good time at your place the last time. Can you come to my place on Friday? Julie, of course. You know I'm a huge movie fan, and with all our friends going, I wouldn't miss it. Super. Jack, you're the only one I haven't heard from. Are you coming to my party on Friday night? Julie. I had a great time at your party last year, so I would love to be there for this party. But my housemates are having some friends around, and I might have to be at home on Friday. Oh, Jack, why don't you see if you can come and let me know later this week? If you would like to bring a friend along or come later, that's fine with me. Just let me know. I would love it if you could come. Okay, Julie. I'll find out more from my friends and see what I can do on Friday. Okay, everyone. I'll speak to you later. I'm looking forward to seeing you all at my house on Friday. Okay, bye. Bye. See ya.